welcome to this Sunday as we worship the Lord. The theme for today's worship is God uphold us in time of trouble. Being eight Sunday after Pentecost, we are reminded the troubles are there in life. And we can't get away with the trouble because God gives us strength to overcome troubles. And that is the greatest joy that we have. As the psalmist says, as the pants, the heart of the cooling streams, when heated in the chase, so long my soul, O God, for thee, thy refreshing grace. Isn't it true? I just cast down my, all my desire, all myself to the Lord Jesus today as we worship. The psalmist says, God is our hope and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved. Yes, we are called not to move from fear, be remain firm, committed even during the COVID. We have lost many. A lot of hurts are there. A lot of losses are there. A lot of heartbreaks are there. We lost a very dear ones, far and near. But the Bible says, do not fear. So, Lord... My soul thirst for the Lord, yet even for the living God. So let's 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 worship, rejoice as we worship the Lord today. Say the prayer together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. To Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. 
Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty Father, look with mercy on your church, which cannot fulfill its ministry without your aid. And in all our dangers and necessities, stretch out your hand to help and sustain us. To Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and ever. Amen. The responsive reading this morning has been taken from Psalms 42, verses 1 to 5. Please respond by saying, We will not fear, though the earth be moved. As the deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night. While they say to me all the day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude-keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise Him, my salvation. Testament reading is taken from 2 Kings chapter 18 verses 28 to 30 and 35 chapter 19 verses 1 to 7 then the commander stood and shouted loudly in the Hebrew language listen to what the great king the king of Assyria says, The king says you should not let Hezekiah fool you because he can't save you from my power. Don't let Hezekiah talk you into trusting the Lord by saying, The Lord will surely save us. This city won't be handed over to the king of Assyria. Not one of all the gods of these countries has saved his people from me. Neither can the Lord save Jerusalem from my power. When King Hezekiah heard the message, he tore his clothes and put on rough cloth to show how sad he was. Then he went into the temple of the Lord Hezekiah sent Eliakim, the palace manager, and Shebna, the royal secretary, and the older priests to Isaiah. They were all wearing rough cloth. When they came to Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, they told Isaiah, This is what Hezekiah says. Today is a day of sorrow and punishment and disgrace, as when a child should be born, but the mother is not strong enough to give birth to it. The king of Assyria sent his field commander to make fun of the living God. Maybe the Lord your God will hear what the commander said and will punish him for it. So pray for the few of us 
who are left alive. When Hezekiah's officers came to Isaiah, he said to them, Tell your master this, the Lord says, Don't be afraid of what you have heard. Don't be frightened by the words of the servants of the king of Assyria have spoken against me. Listen, I'm going to put a spirit in the king of Assyria. He will hear a report that will make him return to his own country and I will cause him to die by the sword there. Here ends the reading of the Holy Word. Thanks be to God. The second Bible reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 23 to 31. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers gather together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in the city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform miraculous signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. This is the reading of the word. Thanks be to God. Amen. Give me 
The Gospel reading has been taken from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading and hearing of his word. Let us thank God for his goodness and let us pray for the world and for the church. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you have promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray. We thank you, Lord, for ourselves and for the church and for people in this world. Thank you for your living presence. Thank you, Lord, in this created world, in the nations of this world, that your living presence is there. And we thank you, Lord, for our country also, where people worship you, adore your name. We pray that you would give wisdom to the leaders of the nation, especially to our president, the prime minister, the lieutenant governor and chief minister of Delhi, and to all in authority under them, direct our nation and all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may all honor one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for our church and our country and throughout the world, especially the Church of North India for its councils, leaders, and especially and our minister. We pray for peace, Singh, our moderator, and also Bishop of Diocese Delhi, that he has taken additional charge from 6th of July. And the moderator, Dharma Raj Rasalam, moderator of the Church of South India. G. Vargis Mahathodius, the Metropolitan of the Marthoma Church. And for our presbyters, Timothy, Dennis, Jay Kumar, our lay leader, Ashish, and Anurag. That Lord, your bless will be upon the Church through their services. Strengthen your church to carry forward the work of Christ, that we all who confess his name may unite in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for our neighbors who stay near to us, our families, our friends, to whom we work, we pray, Lord, that there will be a cordial relationship in our families, with our neighbors, that we be able to grow in your grace and your love, Lord. 
give grace to our families and friends, our neighbors, and those to whom we work, that we may serve you in one another and love each other as you love us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we also want to remember as you give us full and things at home, we remember the hungry, the destitute, the poor, the oppressed, the unemployed during the time of COVID, Lord. Many have lost their job. Many have become poor. Pray for those who provide to their needs. Many have died because of COVID, of old age. Give them hope, Lord, at this time that they lost, lost their dear one. And we pray that those who help them, Lord, that your presence be upon them, to the bereaved family. Strengthen up all, all those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Give them courage and hope in the time of need. And lead them to know the joy of your presence. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We also give thanks to the people who have left your heavenly abode. And during the time of COVID, many from our church, from families, and at large over the nations, many have left. Lord, we pray that you be with the family at this hour. Lord, guard and protect them for the losses that have taken place in the family that they continue to remain faithful to you. They commend to your unfailing love that in them yours will be fulfilled. And we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying that we may share with them in your eternal kingdom. Let us all say together, Hear us, Hairston, Heavenly Father, accept these prayers. For the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. confess our sins beloved our Lord Jesus Christ said the Lord our God is the only Lord and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind and with all your strength this is the first commandment and the second is this love your neighbor as yourself there is no other commandment greater than these God so loved the world that he gave his only son Jesus Christ to save us from our sins to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith 
firmly resolved by God's grace to keep his commandments and to live in love and peace with all people. Let us say the prayer together. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against one another in thought and word and deed, in the evil we have done and in the good we have not done. Through ignorance, through weakness, to our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgive all who forgive one another and truly repent of their sins, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal. To Jesus Christ our Lord, let us all say together, Amen. Thanks be to God. Let us share peace with each other. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Let us pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us say together and also with you. look to the Lord in prayer Lord dear Heavenly Father we want to thank you for this Sunday as we worship you adore your name and we believe during the time of COVID so much of trouble so much of sickness it looks like unending Lord increase our faith in you Lord Jesus to bear the pain and the suffering that our trust may not diminish but increase in you as we are pained, Lord, in these days. 
Lord, guide us as we look to the word. Give us strength as we need at this hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, there is a book titled, When Bad Things Happen to Good People, by Harald Kushner, who raised this question in his book. And somebody asked, you know, why do bad things happen to good people? And the classic answer to that is, I haven't met any good people yet, so I don't know. And the times where troubles become so severe, we fail to see good things happening around. We are so engrossed in trouble that all God is doing and goodness of the God doesn't seem to be, you know, appearing. But Bible always encourages us in this. At times when we are in troubles and suffering with pain, something which is there, which is not very satisfying to us. Bible always come at the time. But times we've forgotten and sort of we don't care. When we feel that everything is against us, the Bible tells us, In you, O Lord, I put my trust. There are times when we feel discouraged and helpless. The Bible comes up and says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where comes from my help? When we feel we are like, like God has forgotten us, He's not with us. The Bible tells us, the psalmist says, You are my God. For early morning I seek your face. Sometimes troubles do not make us stronger in faith and we feel very fragile. But Bible tells us something else. Times when we are in trouble, we, we really do not know the people of God, how good things are happening to them. We aren't able to see. A God is fulfilling their needs, how God is taking care of what we are lacking. Many in time of COVID have lost their husband, their wives, their grandparents, in-laws, brother, sister, far and near. When these losses are there, troubles are there, there's also great joy that Lord is restoring them. And he's taking care of them. That's We don't see much of that. The pains are so deep that we aren't able to see what God is trying to do in us life. It's like something, you know. The four guys who decided to go mountain climbing on the weekend. In the middle of the climb, one fellow slipped over a cliff and dropped about 50 feet and landed on a crash on the rack below. The other three, hoping to rescue him, yelled, Joe, hey, Joey, are you okay? The other three, hoping to rescue him, yelled, Joey, are you okay? Yeah, I'm alive here. Fine, answered Joe. But I think I broke both my arms. So, they'll toss a rope down to you and pull you up. Just lie still. Friends told to Joey. After a couple of minutes, dropping one end of the rope, you know, they started tugging and, you know, grunting together, working very feverishly to pull their wounded friend companion to safety. When they reached to the three-fourths of the way, you know, up, this friend suddenly realized. They suddenly remembered and they realized that he has said that he has broken both his arms. So they asked, Joey, if you bro broke your arms, how in the world are you hanging on? <laughs> well, Joey responded, with my teeth. He said, God, at the time of trouble, when we feel there is no hope, but in sight of God, there is a hope. There is a restoration. He rescues us. But when you see trouble, there is no rescue. We start wondering, how are you being taken care? You cannot be taken care. Today, the passage has been read to us, you know, from 2 Kings chapter 18. It's about the king Hezekiah. It's, this is the time, I'd like to say, that Israel is sort of, you know, surrounded by the enemies. 
There is no hope that they will be restored. They always send and you know, enemies are always crouching them. And there was no relief for them. Northern kingdom, that is Israel, has totally vanished. It's not there at that time. And also the southern kingdom, that is the kingdom of Judah, which is now under attack and was sort of getting totally destroyed. And here comes the king Hezekiah at the age of you know, 25, takes over the throne and he reigned over there for 29 years, the kingdom of Judah. As you're well aware with the history of Israel, the kingdom is divided. The kingdom of Israel and kingdom of Judah, they are not one kingdom like under David and Solomon. It's, it's gone, it's divided. The people have divided themselves. They are in troubles. The families are in trouble. The other nations are always ruling over them. And this is the time King Hezekiah, when he ruled in Jerusalem, he came and started ruling in Jerusalem. But, he, but when he came and started ruling Jerusalem, there he was not in a good place. The trouble is the king of Assyria has started threatening them. They threatened them very badly. He threatened them with his army surrounding. He said, his spokesman went and told him, don't not listen to King Hezekiah. In verse 31, chapter 18, do not listen to the King Hezekiah. Make alliance with me. Come and have peace with me. Come out. You will eat your own wine. Each one of us will have his own fig tree. Each one will drink the water of his own cistern. See, the kind of alliance, the kind of political move that was there. And to that extent, though he did it, Hezekiah alliance with them, he gave them gold and silver to them. Until I come and take away your land, like your own land, a land of grain and wine, land of bread and vineyard, a land of olive trees, honey, that you may live and not die. That's the promise the king of Assyria gives. Alliance with a lot of joy, a lot of happenings, a lot of peace, a lot of restoration. But the whole condition is to don't listen to the king Hezekiah because the king Assyria is going to destroy you. He has destroyed the nations around you. Gods he has destroyed. Don't you know, he, he, he reminds people of Israel. Don't you know that I have gods of nation been delivered out of the hands of their kings? And are given to the king of Assyria. Don't you know that? Now he's threatening not only to people. Who say he's threatening other nations that have taken over them. Their gods and their all the goods. You cannot be spared. Have they delivered Samaria out of your hand? Now, now where the Samarians were. A lot of Jews. A lot of people used to stay. But they, but they were not faithful to the Lord Yahweh. So Assyria came and destroyed them. They were not with the with the people of Israel. They were taken over by a king of Assyria. So they were delivered them out of their hands and given into the hands of Assyria. Don't you know that? Now at that time, you know, it's very important to understand God, when trouble comes, people forget God. They forget the plan. They forget the covenant relationship. They forget the very commandment. They forget for which they were created as a nation. They've forgotten everything. And eventually what has led to them is to think that let's promises what king of Assyria is going, let's follow it. You know, when you forget God, whatever things available around us, we start following it. So the text teaches us a very important thing. It teaches us that people were told to be silent and not to respond to the king of Assyria. Just remain quiet in verse 36. But when come to chapter 19, when when King Hezekiah reaches out to prophet Isaiah, he was there at that time, and he asked him what to do. And then the prophet Isaiah said, in chapter 19, verse 6, he comes into the picture and he sort of tells the right thing. Now they turned to God, but they went to prophet Isaiah to what to do. Because here, King Hezekiah has covered his face and tore his clothes with sackcloth he's on. And he's gone, and then he's just sitting in the house of the Lord, like mourning. I'm defeated, I'm gone, I'm nothing. The troubles are on my head, the land will go. People will be slaves again. 
And then Prophet Isaiah gave an assurance. In the midst of the trouble, trial and strife and pain and threats. Do not be afraid, Prophet Isaiah said in chapter 19 verse 6. Because the word that you have heard with the servant of King Assyria has revealed. Has sort of, you know, make me angry, revile me. Behold, I'll put a spirit in him that he will hear a human return to his own land. I'll make him fall by the sword of his own land. And it literally that happened. If we come to the verse 34, that he saved his nation. Isaiah prophesied, I will save your nation. And then you come down to last word in verse 37, that with the sword of his son, Assyria king was tortured to death, but killed by his own family. They were not only confused with their army, with each other, but they were tortured to death. Now, how God is handling trouble over here? The passage teaches us something very important. He gives us a prophecy, which always comes to fulfillment, and Isaiah says the prophecy in verse 20 onwards, chapter 19, the whole prayer. He reminds them. He remind them how what he has done to the enemies in the Egypt. And he will remind them, have you not heard that I determined long ago that I planned my days of old what I have now bring to pass that you shall turn fortified city into heap of ruins. He remind them you are going to make such things. These cities and all these fortified fortresses that are made, they will be destroyed. But I know you're sitting down, you're going out and coming in, you're ragging against me because you have raged against me, your, your complexes have come into my ears. People have forgotten God. So before he restores, he tells the sins of the people what they have done. How complicit they have become, making with other nation alliance and sitting down with them. And when they come and start destroying, we find it difficult to do, they find it difficult to handle. His Bible teaches, you know, that we should be very careful when trouble comes. We should not go in and compromise our commitment to Lord, the way that we live. The end of the passage that we read to us from, um, from Mark Gospel, that is where, you know, Jesus was stilling the storm in chapter 4, but the verse 40, the people were just were going to drown and were there. Before the sea could be calm, and they, and Jesus, when calm the sea, uh, he raised the question: Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? Seeing the miracles happening, seeing what God has done before them, before chapter five, four, how God has been healing them, restoring them. There was a man with a withered hand; he restored them. He, they saw it. They, he taught them the parables of the sea, the parable under the lamp of the basket, the mustard seed that we saw it last time. He said, you've seen these things happening, the parable of a sower. All these things have been taught, but yet you don't have faith. You know, that's the question that comes today. Do we still have that living faith in Lord Jesus Christ? What does God promise to his people? Relief? Are we expecting to do relief from all troubles? So that we can go to the next world the Lord has planned to go? No. But that's what we think. People who are faithful, they have seen the deliverance from the hand of trouble and pain and sicknesses. People have seen times when there is a financial crisis that are, they have been delivered out of there. The manner of troubles that they had in the family with the children and the married life, God had delivered them time to time. They have taken them out. Are we looking that options in our life? Are we looking the bloods that are shed in the war? The nations are destroyed. Are we looking that to happen to relief out of trouble? To such people, you know, when the time, you know, trouble comes, when the comfort is there, when we are at ease, we forget God. When the worst time suddenly comes, you know, that if we ask from God to help us, but sometimes it doesn't come a help. But sometimes it comes that Lord wants us to pray for. Lean on me and you will survive and thrive. Bible says always when we face devastation, the conditions of life tells us the problems, which is inevitable. 
Even when there are no clean paths, solutions, answers from God, we are not without support of God. That's what the passage is all about. That's what the Lord wants to teach us. Though people may murmur, aren't you going to help us? The people will murmur, look, these enemies are around us. Then why did you start having a complacent life? Why did you left the covenant pledges? Why have you gone and lived with the other nation with idols? The Bible tells in Hebrew chapter 13 verse 20, it says, He will make us, make us complete according to His pleasure, no matter what we go through. Regardless of what happened to us, if we follow Jesus, the Lord will continue molding us. He will start shaping us. I'm willing to be shaped. That's we're willing to do the work that pleases Him rather than us. Make God our refuge. Dwell in Him. He will keep us. He will not forsake us. If we trust God, making a hiding place, He will make sure to protect us. Peter started preaching in Acts chapter 4. And they said, this is one whom you crucified. He takes the history of Israel down through the lane and tells them, this is the one whom you crucified who is resurrected from the dead. You know, he was bold enough to speak in front of the people who crucified Jesus. No matter how much trouble may come him, though he was put into prison, he and John, they came out rejoicingly. Because they couldn't stop him because they were preaching boldly, even in the midst of troubles and pain and the threat to their lives. God always rescues his people in trouble. When your people remember the Lord, when they follow rightly the path. You know, that's the message today. Troubles are not a problem today, but the troubles are a problem when we forget God. Troubles are not an obstacle today. But troubles are obstacle today when we start living a complacent life. Troubles are problem today when you don't want to face trouble. And when we face trouble without God, there are troubles, there are pains. But we take Lord Jesus with us, the troubles will vanish. They will not appear before us. Today the church has to face this. It has to face this part of the history. Again, the troubles have come in. Again, people of God have been challenged. But here we are in the sight of God. Are we going to run away by seeing the trouble? Or are we going to stand strong against all storms? Let's face it. Let's face the trouble. Let's face the crisis. Let's face all the Lord has laid it for us. I want to end through one poem written by Linda Sandel. A wonderful called day by day you know the pain and toil and troubles are there day by day but what she says she says like this day by day with each passing moment strength I find to meet my trials here trusting in my father's wise bestowment I have no cause of worry of a fear. He whose heart is kind beyond all measure, give unto each day what he deems best. Lovingly, it, it's part of pain and pleasure, mingling toil with peace and rest. Isn't it lovely? Trials give us strength. Trials make us overcome worry and fear. Trials which makes us pain. Bear pain lovingly. And always, no matter how much is the Toiling, going on, so much suffering and trouble, going, but my heart rests upon peace and I rest in peace. May God bless us at this hour of trial, the time of trouble during COVID. Don't lose hope. Don't hope the sight of Christ coming. Don't, hope, don't lose hope of the promises. Stick on, hang on, and keep pressing on, keep pressing on. 
keep pressing on your faith though hard the trouble may be and lord will make it overcome and let more trouble comes and lord will make it more powerfully overcome more powerfully upon us stand strong in lord jesus christ no matter what may happens let's pray lord your word is sharper than the two edged sword no matter battle which is waged against your church against your people against the humanity lord you are there to lead that battle to victory because the bible gives us victory there is no defeat there is victory and victory in jesus lord doesn't dismay us doesn't make us weak doesn't make us feeble no matter what may be the cause lord is there lord jesus is there to take care of us in jesus name we pray amen let us all affirm our faith and say together we believe in one god the father the almighty maker of heaven and earth we believe in one lord jesus christ the only son of god eternally begotten of the father god from god light from light true god from true god begotten not made one in being with the father through him all things were made for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven by the power of the holy spirit he was born of the virgin mary and became man for our sake he was crucified under pontius pilate he suffered died and was buried on the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the father He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism of the forgiveness of sins we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come amen praise god from who God is love and those who abide in love abide in God and God abides in them God the holy trinity make you strong in faith and love and defend you at all times and the blessing of God almighty the father the son and the holy spirit be with us now and ever Amen.
will be